meeting of the Westchester Area School District for Monday, March 27, 2023. Uh, the salute to the flag tonight will be led by, by Ben Bermucci and Kira Rodriguez of Veracy House Elementary School. So they are here. Any family members who would care to identify yourself, just a little hand raise or something? Oh, <laughs> lots of people. You, have, you brought a big crowd. Okay, and Ms. Pablo, their principal, are here to support them as they introduce the wonders of Mary C. House to us. But first, they will come up to the microphone. That's it, you two. And um, Mr. Wagner, you may have to help with that microphone. We don't know. Good, good. All right, let us rise and salute the flag led by Ben and Kira. <coughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hello, I am Pierre Rodriguez and I am in fifth grade at Mary C. House. We're here to tell you about all the opportunities that all students have at Mary C. House. Recently, a 4th and 5th grade honors band and honors orchestra performed for friends and family at East High School. A spring music concert at Mary C is happening soon, and we'd love for you to attend. Did you know back in January, our school had a cereal drive, and we collected almost 500 pounds of cereal to donate to the Chester County Food Bank? We're on the subject of friends. If you didn't get a chance to check out the Black History Museum, right, just ask Dr. Reynolds how amazing it was. We also recently had a spring fair, which was loads of fun for everyone. Our student media crew is also working hard to capture all of these events and create videos for our memories. And now I'm going to hand things off to my friend, Ben. Hello. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ben Bermusi, as Kira just said, and I am also a fifth grader at Mary C. House. We value reading at all le grade levels in our school. So putting that in mind, the Mary C. House Beautification Committee sponsored a children's library at Chadwell Apartments. The library is sponsored by the Laundromat Library League. The League's goal is to increase children's access to books at home. The organization places libraries and laundromats and similar sites in which children and caregivers can spend time. Children and caregivers are invited to enjoy a book take it home, and eventually pass it on to another child. As fifth graders, we have been helping, far, we have been helping kindergarten students with their letter writing skills. Our youngest learners have been writing to Fireball, our fearless mascot. Fifth graders have been, taking, uh, have been helping Fireball respond. So if you have any questions for Fireball, mail your, mail your letter to Mary C, and we will take care of it. Thank, Thank you for your time, and have, have a great evening. Oh, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Let me see. 
None of us, no, not that. This. <laughs> how, how many, here's one for the, here's one for the dragon. How many blue ribbons has Mary C. House School won? Great. Good guess. Good guess. <laughs> and um, I asked you if you knew how old Mary uh, Mary C. House was when she died in 1981. That's hardly a couple years ago. She was 89 years old. And what was her claim to fame? In other words, what great things did she do for education? She was on the school board for 16 years. She started at age 53 and lasted 16 years being on the school board. And apparently after she died, she, or before she died, before she died, she helped start an, a library in Exton. And so people said, there was a good woman, we're gonna name that new little school after her. And they did. So that's your Mary C. And uh, some other things that I read up on before you came here was, um, you know, we have people around here who are barking up the wrong tree. Now, how, what's that mean? <laughs> One of you is barking up the wrong tree. I don't know who. Is anybody means, barking? Okay. I'll answer this. It means like uh, saying the wrong thing, doing something wrong. Exactly. Pretty much. Exactly. And we said before the meeting started, what are all these sayings called? Idioms. And if you don't grow up speaking English, when somebody says, keep your nose to the grindstone, or uh, keep your eye on it. People uh, sometimes look at Americans when they talk and think we are very strange <laughs> people indeed. So I really like the picture that's on the website, which has kids holding umbrellas with cats and dogs hanging from them. Because really, after it rains, we don't see a lot of cats and dogs out in the street or the road just raining, you know, that fell down. So uh, both of you, you got your act together before you came here. You two are really on the ball, and your presentation is the icing on the cake for this meeting. So we thank you. So we're going to come give you our appreciation. And I'm bringing the superintendent with me. She's really the big cheese around here. All right. Now, Kira, I go, this is how we do it. Just, we're going to pretend they could graduate in here. <laughs> Ready? You're going to take this in this hand, this hand, and we shake like this. Congratulations! <laughs> and you made it! Come up here! The three of them at the end of the table, they're seniors, and they have one more school board meeting to go. They've been with us this whole year. They're senior reps to the school board meeting. They're on our school board. And so, there's something to think about next time when you get to your high school. Mr. Bramusi, congratulations. You made it. Yay. Okay. Come on in here. Yeah, I'm going to. I know to go sideways. And look at me smile. Wonderful job. Thank you. Full of personality, I'll tell you.
Mr. Christie, who is sitting to my right, uh, will be on the Education Committee and the Pupil Services Committee, so that each committee still has four people. And I believe that's all the changes that I had to report to you. Now, Mrs. Chair, if we can have roll call. Vice President Bevilacqua. Here. Director Chester. <coughs> Director Christie. Here. Director Dietrich. Here. Director Durnell. Here. Director Fleming. Here. Director Herman. Here. President Tiernan. Here. Director Lonsley. Here. Emily McElweavy. Here. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Joseph? Here. CJ McHugh? Here. Now, public comments on agenda items. Sign in was required and take it from here. Thank you, President Tiernan. Good evening. Now is the time for public comment on agenda items only. We have one registrant. We'll hear from four public commenters toward the end of the meeting on non-agenda items. As a reminder, persons wishing to make public comment were required to properly register prior to the designated 7 p.m. start time. When public commenters' names are called, please approach the podium and begin by stating their first name, last name, and municipality. Public comments are limited to three minutes per person. The three-minute time clock will be projected on the screens located throughout the room. The board asks that all commentary be directed to the board as a whole. Public comments may be interrupted or terminated if the commentary exceeds three minutes or if the commentary is obscene and or threatening in nature. All persons attending this meeting are expected to conduct themselves with decorum and civility. In addition to refraining from abusive and profane remarks, please also be respectful of all persons in public comments, including those comments and opinions that differ from your own. Distracting and disruptive behavior or other actions which interfere with the orderly conduct of this public meeting will not be tolerated. We will now call the first speaker. Judy DeFonzo. Hi, Judy DeBonzo, still living in East Goshen Township. Um, wanted to talk tonight a little bit about settlement agreements, because I know that they kind of come up just about every board meeting. And um, there are for students who have an IEPs where the school district cannot meet their needs. They generally have um, more complicated uh, disabilities. And uh, their options are either to go to a crew private school or another private school without an IEP. And I want to talk about a young man um, who actually has a settlement agreement, I believe, starting in sixth grade, went to our school district here in Westchester. Um, he's friends with the author of this book here, Underestimated, and he wrote one of the chapters in the book. Um, he has autism and apraxia. His name is Vince. Uh, I do have his mom's permission to share the information that I'm, I'm sharing with you guys. Um, and he went to the Talk Institute. And with his apraxia, he was not speaking. He, he has problems with fine motor. That's really what apraxia does. And the combination of autism. And um, through, let's just say, outreach and, and such, he, he's now learned to communicate. He uses a letter board or a, a, a typewriter that he can uh, talk on. He has to use, uh, he uses actually gross motor skills to do that. And um, they made a documentary about this little book here. And um, Vince is uh, in the documentary, and he's also going to be at a screening in King of Prussia on uh, the, um, gosh, I have it here, um, on April 30th, it's a Sunday, 1 o'clock. And unfortunately, I had technical difficulties. There's a QR card that you need to kind of sign up for tickets, but I wanted to kind of invite the board and, and any other members of the audience to come out to King of Prussia and, and meet Vince. Um, the author's uh, brother will also be uh, at, at the showing. And um, I just find it amazing that, you know, after all this time, I think he was about 19 years old when he uh, 
started letterboarding, and he finally found his voice. And I just wanted the school board to know that even someone as apparently disabled as Vince was could have a really positive outcome with the settlement agreements and being able to go off campus from Westchester and to a private school that can better meet uh, a student's needs. And I know that he's wanted to come out and, and thank you, and I'm kind of just, um, I'm hoping he does come out at some point and, and, and where you can meet him. And uh, I just wanted to invite you and, and so you can meet him. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. And I think if you would get that information to our communications person, Ms. Schwemler, uh, she can get the information out to the community that a graduate or someone who touched our, touched our premises uh, but went on to another school uh, is in a film about students who may be underestimated. I, I really appreciate that, Mrs. Chairman. I, I think that um, my friend would, would appreciate seeing that on, on the school district, like on the Facebook page and whatnot. Sure. I will definitely send it out. Thank you. Judy, can you make sure to also send it to me specifically? Uh, graphic. So the story you just told is really, it's very heartwarming, and um, I would love to support a student in their journey with that. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely. I, I'll make some notes to send it out. Thank you. Thank All right, moving along, we would, I'm looking for approval of the minutes of the February 27th school board meeting. Do I have a motion? <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Petrie. And a second, Mr. Bevilacqua. Uh, any discussion or comments on the minutes from February 27th school board meeting? Seeing none, we'll take the vote. Director Petrie. Yeah. Vice President Bevilacqua. Yes. Director Wamsley. <coughs> yes. Director Christie. Yes. Director Dernell. Yes. Director Honey. Yes. Director Fleming. Yes. President Tierney. Yes. So I think we need a correction on that. Yes. I believe Director Christie should have seen. Right. Yeah. Just because you weren't You know, I, I thought so, but then I got back to questions. <laughs> <laughs> Now we need approval of the minutes of the special board meeting for the special board meeting on March 20th, 2023. Uh, for I need a first, Mrs. Herman, a second, Mr. Darnell. Discussion or questions about the special board meeting on the 20th of February? Seeing none, we will take a vote. Director Herman? Yes. Director Dernell? Yes. Director Christie? You can just say his name. Director Dietrich? Yes. Director Bonsley? Yes. Director Fleming? Yes. Vice President Benalacqua? Yes. President Tiernan? Yes. There she goes. Thank you. Now, seeking approval for the March 27th school board meeting agenda. Um, thank you, Dr. Dietry is the first, Mr. Bevilacqua has the second. Questions or discussion about tonight's agenda? Anything? No? Seeing none, we'll take the vote. Director. Oh, sorry. Do we add this after or before? After. Go ahead, take the vote. Director Dietry? Yes. Vice President Bevilacqua? Yes. Director Christie? Yes. Director Fleming? Yes. Director Dernell? Yes. Director Wamsley? Yes. Director Herman? Yes. President Tierney? Yes. There she goes. All right, now, Ms. Chair Sharp, you would add to the minutes that the board met in executive session on Monday, March 13th to discuss personnel issues and March 27th to discuss personnel and legal issues cover us for this month. 
Thank you very much. Now, Dr. Reynolds, it's your report time. Thank you, President Tiernan. Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight. This month has been quite busy with an exceptional lineup of music, art, and theater performances, as well as sports highlights, which I know that our student representatives will get to in just a bit, but I wanted to cover just a few items for celebration. First, as we close out the month of March, we want to celebrate that March is Women's History Month and Music in Our Schools Month. And I know that Director Darnell will be sharing some more information about our Women's History Months that were celebrated at Fern Hill, but I want to share that as a panelist at that event, I'd like to express my personal thanks to uh, the staff and the students, particularly to Dr. Southmade and Mrs. Um, to, to, to Alex, too, the counselor there, and my fellow panelists. We had um, Senator Kamita, we also had um, Westchester Mayor D. Baptiste there for listening to our words of advice. We had a wonderful student audience, and we had an, oppor uh, an opportunity to just share our words of affirmation and to hear from our student voices, particularly for our, our young student leaders that were in the crowd. And it was important to underscore the point that it's never too early to start to make a difference. So we want to just celebrate that event at Fern Hill. For our Music in the Schools Month, we had a truly, truly wonderful lineup. We've had a number of productions. Les Mis at Ruston, Anything Goes at East, Footloose at Henderson, and most recently this past weekend, Newsies at Fugit. Um, upcoming, we have um, Susan Cole Jr., which will be held at um, Stetson, and we also are super excited to announce this Friday, East High School will put on their House of Hope charity event, which is a concert completely fully stu student run, and if you missed last year, I have to say, you do not want to miss this year. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal night at showcasing all of the talent for our student performers. And the benefits go to Home of the Sparrow, and that's coming up this Friday. We also like to congratulate three uh, Westchester Area School District string students who are moving from the 2023 PMEA Region 6 Orchestra to Pennsylvania All State. We have Daniel Chang from East High School, who is a senior, and two students from Ruston High School, sophomore violinist Badu Serum and junior bassist Abby Kelly. And congratulations, a job very well done to all 11 string students from Eastern Rutson and one wind uh, student from Henderson who successfully auditioned for Region Orchestra. East High School placed first in Chester County for the academic regional competition. Kudos to them. We want to give congratulations to our East High School academic competition students and their teachers for placing first in Chester County at the Academic Regional Competition, big deal. East will represent Chester County at the State Academic Competition, which will take place at the Capitol Building uh, later in April. We also, just this past Friday night, we want to give thanks to um, the celebration for our Education Foundation. They hosted a big event. The Westchester Area Community Foundation hosted the Harlem Wizard over at East High School. We want to say thanks to our families, our staff members, our volunteers, and also to the Education Foundation board members who joined us on Friday evening for the Harlem Wizards, uh, benefiting students throughout our district through the Westchester Area Education Foundation. The excitement was palpable, and it was felt all through the gym. Uh, we had students and families all over. I have to say, I, I had the pleasure of refereeing the event with Dr. Garvin and Dr. Missit was our coach, and we just had great, great time for a worthy cause, and um, it was a lot of fun. I was chastised for not correctly putting the ball in for the team, but that goes without saying. <laughs> and I don't think any of the players listened to me, but it was awful awesome fun. And we also want to give a bit of a preview for the upcoming month. We have a number of events on a uh, lineup, and one of the most important that we have to underscore the great work and efforts of our students is upcoming next month, on April 12th, we have the annual Spelman Humanitarian Award. And we have a busy spring, but this one is important because the annual Spelman Award will take place on April 12th, and it focuses on recognizing students from all three high schools for their community service. And I uh, would be remiss if I didn't share that the award is named after Dr. Uh, Ozzie Spelman, former school board member here at the Westchester Area School District. 
very well done as, and the father of our very own President Gutierrez. And so we want to just celebrate and highlight the great work that our students are doing across all our high schools, particularly as we send off our seniors. And we want to just underscore that this event shows all that is good about our students and our community. There's so much to celebrate. I can't tell you how proud I am of being able to be a member of the audience and, and look at the great work that has been highlighted from our student performers, from our teachers and coaches that are doing so much to, to champion and celebrate our students. And I can continue to go on and on, but I want to close this report with a reminder that you can find our upcoming events and important dates on our district website under either the calendar or celebrate the arts tab. And that's located under community information. And now I'm going to turn it over to our student representatives and we'll kick it off to Patty, who's filling in for Emily this night. If you'd like to go ahead and get us started, Patty. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me tonight. My name is Patty Gustin. I'm a member of our student council and the student representative for the Education Foundation. Unfortunately, Emily is currently on a family vacation and was unable to make it this evening, but she sends her apologies. Yet again, March was another busy month at East High School. Looking at some in-house items, our student council was able to hold our annual Viking Slam volleyball tournament, which took place on March 16th after school. We were so thrilled to see students from all grades and teachers and staff coming together to participate in some friendly competition. As usual, all students were thrilled to get to spend their Thursday evening with their friends and classmates, uniting in school spirit. Thank you to all student council members and advisors, Mrs. Moreno Davis and Mrs. Julie, for making this event possible. In addition to our Viking Slam event, our student council also coordinated a wellness week for all staff and students as a goal to spring mindfulness and mental health awareness within our school. It is taking place this very week, our first spirit day being today, students and staff were encouraged to wear pajamas to express being comfortable with yourself. As you can imagine, everyone's Monday mood greeted this spirit day with full participation. For the remainder of the week, we have Sun Mass Day, Pig Day, Neon Day, and East Gear Day, all paired with activities such as mindfulness, coloring, playing music in between classes, and meditation that will be incorporated into students' curriculum this week to ensure the highest level of awareness. On Thursday, we will have an assembly held for 11th and 12th graders to attend to educate us on the subject of domestic violence. And to end our wellness week, on Friday, teachers have created fun activities for students to attend. From making an NFL March Madness bracket to playing Taylor Swift Bingo, students can choose how they would like to spend their day. Next, looking at our music department, the March 12th, on March 12th through the 14th, our East Theater Company put on the production of Anything Goes. Set in the 1930s, the audience was taken through a captive cruise from New York to London with plenty of gangsters, sailors, and low triangles along the way. I had the privilege of being dance captain for this production, and I can say we got our cardio workout down after that tap dance number. This was truly a show to remember, and congratulations to our East Theater Company on putting on, no, putting on yet another wonderful production. We look forward to what you have planned next year. In addition to this, our student-run House of Hope charity concert will be this Friday in the auditorium. Performances include singers, dancers, instrumentalists, and bands, including me with my real band. Tickets are being sold for $8 and $10 at the store. You can buy tickets at www.wc.net slash House of Hope. All proceeds go to benefit Homo Sparrow, who works to combat homelessness. We encourage our whole community to come out and support Friday evening as it's such a huge success every year. Moving on to our sports department, our boys hockey team has officially taken home the third state championship in a row. A huge congratulations to all the players and coaches, with a special mention to senior Logan Softster, who is the only player who has been on the team all three years of the championship games. With the end of our winter sports season, the spring sports season has bestowed upon us. We are thrilled to see the success all our boys and girls sports teams will have this season. This season has already started off with a great start with lacrosse, lacrosse player Molly Smiles receiving her 100th goal throughout her past four years on the East Girls Lacrosse varsity team. Congratulations, Molly. Moving on to our art department, our National Art Honor Society worked hard to plan out their annual coffee house, where all students in the school display their artwork and the community was invited to the showing. This year, it took place on March 17th. With great music from our East performers, beautiful art, and of course, coffee, the coffee house was a huge success. 
It was amazing to see all our students' talents and how dedicated they were to their passion. Thank you to all students and staff who made this event possible. This now concludes the East March report. Thank you. Good evening. Um, since our last meeting, Henderson's production of Footloose took place from March 16th, 16th to the 18th. With one show each day and two shows on the 18th, they had little room for error. However, on opening night, there was a small power outage that affected Henderson 30 minutes before the curtains were scheduled to open. Um, but that didn't stop my, my, my checks from uh, occurring, and the cast kept their cool. And a couple of minutes later, the power kicked back on, which is why it started like 7 or 7, or instead of 7. Um, some notable things. Correct character development was really prevalent in the scenes as they progressed. Wow, okay, that was <laughs> messed up. And then the musical numbers were a sight and sound to behold. My favorite characters were Reverend Sean Moore, played by Ryan Hughes, Rusty, played by Janae Davenport, and Cowboy Bob, played by Eva Chicano. Thanks to President Tiernan and Dr. Herman and anyone else who was out there um, to come into opening night and support the cast of Footloose. In other news, um, the Angel Hooks Junior Foundation will be held in, holding their annual charity gala. Um, the Abundance Goodness Gala on April 22nd. Uh, <coughs> that's not your thing, that's okay, but I will say the silence and live auctions have some pretty fun items among a boat ride, but there's also two floor tickets to May 14th, the Eras Tour for Taylor Swift Concert. <gasps> <laughs> 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 it's like the silent auction. I mean, it's one of the auctions. Um, I think that's going to be the most common May 14th. Oh, oh, May 14th. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Earlier today, Henderson's softball team held their paint game to unite for her in honor of Shirley Adams, a parent of a Henderson softball alumni who had just been from fighting against breast cancer. Unfortunately, it was rained out and had to be continued or rescheduled for another day. However, I will mention that Henderson was beating Coastville 12 to 1 before the rain stopped. Um, on the topic of sports, um, four of Henderson's track and field athletes <laughs> went to New Balance Nationals. Congrats to, congratulations to Preston Lubeski, Cooper DeVries, Will Potter, and Jada Barksdale for their exemplary, exemplary athletic skills. Tomorrow, Henderson's choir is going to Macmillan University for some professional constructive criticism. So we'll be judged by like a group of like a panel of judges, um, local to the area. Uh, we'll all be going and like performing our like, set for the choir concert in the spring, and we'll be judged based on that. And based on that kind of feedback, we'll. It's a little early, but not, it's not never too early. So Henderson's Spring Cold Concert is April 29th at the Church of the Good Samaritan. Um, in my opinion, Henderson's choir is the best, so I'd like to uh, extend my invitation to all of you to attend our Spring Concert. That is it for the Henderson. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's finally spring. It's allergy season, so bear with me through this. <laughs> so, starting things off, uh, on March 7th, Ruston had its annual career day where both local and national businesses and colleges came into the school to present to students. This year, it was a little bit different. Typically, what will happen is we'll have local business people, local just people in any profession come in, they basically get a classroom, and then students will sign up through Naviance choose like two rooms that they want to go to. This year, uh, it just took place down in the auction. It was just during lunch and learn. And all the all the uh, people presenters had tables set up where the students could just make their way around the auction and engage with people. And what was really neat was we were trying to, well actually, hold on for a second. First, kudos to administration because they were smart in planning this because it is hard to get students to come to these things sometimes. <laughs> So they made an advisory period, which basically meant you couldn't leave if you had like your the senior junior privilege, and then you'd have to go to what is your advisory class. So basically, encourage kids to hey, go down check it out. So the auction was packed with people, and it was fun because the guidance department put prizes, some sweatshirts, and which my a Lululemon bag, which my sisters tell me is a big deal, <laughs> big deal. So, and it was cool because basically students were uh, encouraged to participate with the presenters to get tickets that would ultimately 
end up getting them to win these prizes. And as I was there, I had a whole thing of tickets on me, so I got to go around and hand out some tickets too, and maybe hand some tickets to the student council people that were helping out. They were doing a good job, you know, because they were kind of too engaged. They were working. Anyways, moving on, we had a Model UN, Rustin Model UN Club took 33 students up to New York City for the National High School Model United Nations Conference. This is a global competition where students from all over the place were there and participated in 15 hours of intense debate and discussion. I mean, I think half of my committee, which was probably 60 people, were Italian, and not just like Italian, from Italy. Because they would be speaking Italian in the back and I have no idea what they're saying. Which it got a little annoying sometimes when you're trying to listen to people speak up front, listen to their ideas, but nevertheless, I was uh, in the UNESCAP committee, which is the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for the Southeast Asia and the Pacific. And I was the Philippines was my country. So it's cool as you get a country, you usually get a partner, and you basically, you are that country. You have to research that country. You basically, of the stance of those countries' views, and come up with potential solutions to problems that they put your way, your way. And then, a really neat thing about, like, I know I told you guys last month we went to the one in Philly, the one with Henry Smith when he was there. But the really neat thing about this one was the closing ceremony was at the actual United Nations General Assembly. So I know everyone's seen it, but have you been there? No, I got to go there, along with 33 other students. And it's, it's really surreal being in there. And we, at, uh, Rustin had the opportunity to have two students get up and speak at the General Assembly at that stage, got to speak to everyone. They were up on the, the uh, big screens, too. It was a really, really neat experience. Overall, awesome trip to New York City, a lot of fun. Just this past week, Rustin's Environmental Club had their, held their annual campus cleanup. Members of both the Environmental Club and Student Council, as well as just anyone willing to help, went around campus trying to keep it as pristine as possible this past week. And they did an excellent job because campus like always is beautiful. Uh, just this past Friday, we had an SEL day. So there was a student organized dodgeball tournament. And I heard this was, I did not participate in this. I missed the deadline to get a team together. I was busy with Molly and I was kind of feeling, uh, what did you say? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, I heard it was a lot, a lot of fun. And then the final is going to be held during Lunch and Learn this week. Uh, my only little sports news for this month is the girls basketball team just wrapped up an incredible season. They finished with a record of 27 and four, and they were Chessmont champs, District one champs, and state semifinalists. Amazing season from them. And then moving into this April, it's now election season for student council, as well as the other clubs, but mainly student council, because you guys better not have gotten too used to my ugly mug up here, all right? Because it's gonna be changing soon. <laughs> have to move on. <laughs> but you'll get someone else great. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys this month, and we'll see you next month. I, I'm going to give the board just a little bit of a chance to, uh, if, they, if they happen to drop by any of the high schools o over the last week, the last three weeks, uh, I literally ran into Sean in the aisle for Footloose. I, I missed the opportunity to dance. I thought I was going to have the opportunity to get up in the aisle and dance, but no, they didn't have audience participation. It was great. What Henderson has done very, in an unusual way, the last two years has had Mamma Mia and Footloose, which don't have pit orchestras, which means all the energy is up on the stage. And, uh, ah, the number of boys dancing, the number of kids dancing and doing it really well was impressive. East, I, I can hardly say enough, Dr. Herman and I went to see that 1920s Cole Porter play, and you, you just killed it. It was the singing, the dancing, professional, the, the comedic chops of the actors, professional. Don't you agree, Mr. Drell? It was funny. We sat and laughed out loud from beginning to end. So you got the 1920s humor, you know, the people who were not supposed to be on that ship at all, and somebody's getting married, somebody's locked up, but they're the wrong person. It was just, 
very funny and very wonderful. And then Les Mis, I brought you this, um, CJ, so you can take it home and read it, about Les Miserables, you know that French thing. And um, that is always, that is always um, a stirring performance. Most of us have seen that on stages here and there for years. So it's not unfamiliar when, when it starts, it's an emotional play. I left a ticket, one of my tickets, I got for you, CJ. I left it on the table in the back, thinking you might come in later, you know, when it got dark and nobody could see you sitting there. But you didn't come. And so um, I said, just give it to anybody who shows up. And a, a nice woman came. And she started talking, and I asked her uh, uh, who she was. And she said she was a math teacher at Ruston. She was here to see her students. And she said she was from Ukraine. And so here she was watching a show that can be really kind of painful to watch about young people going to war and dying and, and how painful that all is and revolution and that whole concept. And she was just deeply touched. She had not seen a high school performance. She didn't, she had never seen what I missed. So there, there you go. It, what you put on and then of course, I had to show up and see what was going on at Hugot last weekend. When you see 170 middle school kids on the stage at one time, you know that some teachers and staff, a lot of them, have worked themselves to the bone to get them all dancing in the same direction, back, forth, in, out, not hurting each other. It's a magnificent way to start uh, performances. And the other thing that it teaches is, if it's done correctly, um, our, our, our students, our uh, numbers of students were in all the audiences and cheering mightily for their classmates. When students get to come see plays that are just close to being Broadway plays, they know how to respond. They know how to clap at the appropriate time. They know how to, when it's time to stand up and give a standing ovation, if earned, and they did that. It's when the, they know that the kids might come back for a, an encore. They get to know that stuff. So we are not just teaching people on the stage how to sing and dance, but the people in the other part of the theater how to respond. It, it's just a beautiful thing to see. And when you think of the energy, the love, the excitement that goes into those kinds of performances, you've got to look at a public school system and say, darn, they're doing some good stuff here. And this is, this is not to say sports aren't wonderful, academic competitions are not meaningful, they all are. But when you see our kids who already have four or five AP classes, giving time to do those things at night and go to PMEA and win more prizes, it's a pretty impressive place that you represent. So you can go off to college and feel, Mr. Joseph, are you, have you decided yet? What is it? Penn State Cybersecurity Analytics and Operations. Analytics and Operations. Yes, you'll be back to run the world soon. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Patty, where are you doing it this year? Um, I don't know where I'm going, but I know I want to major in poli sci. Uh huh. Okay. So my top three colleges right now are <coughs> Jefferson, Rochester, and Drexel. Okay. So you'll let us know when you do know yes. where you're going. And CJ going to Pitt, where I hear there are no allergies. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the pollen is just about dead, so yeah. you'll be good there. There you go. All right, so next month we will celebrate our three school board reps and thank them for giving up all those Monday nights. Uh, next month. May. May. Always right. quibbling about little things like dates. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to leave you that quickly. <laughs> Try to rush us out. <laughs> no, no, no. Your mother would not be happy. <laughs> Anybody else? Daryl? Uh, yes, I went to, my husband and I went to all three musicals. And I, we were just blown away. First of all, my husband loves Les Mis. And I'm thinking, that's a big show. Y'all pulled it off. The voices, all three, all three plays, completely different tones, types of musicals, but the amazing music, the, the voices were amazing. 
I, I did a little bit of music theater when I was in high school and then the year afterwards. I don't remember how I learned all those lines. I don't know how you all learned all those lines. You know, the sets have come a long way. From when I, when I was in high school, we had some trees that looked like they were designed by, I don't know, a cartoonist. But you got the sets and your shows were just phenomenal, very professional. Everything about it. So please pass along to your theater bros and sisters. Just what a phenomenal job everybody did. They were so much fun to watch. Uh, and look forward to House of Hope uh, Friday night. That's going to be amazing as well. Anybody else? I wanted to thank you. Unfortunately, I missed the rest in. Um, but I saw the other two. I know, I had another commitment. I'm sorry, so CJ. Nice. <laughs> but this is kind of what it's all about. What we see when the students are seniors, it's so impressive, very impressive. Um, I had to keep President Tierney in line for the footloose. She <laughs> wanted to dance, and unfortunately, she missed that. So, But thank you. The music was wonderful. Um, it makes us very proud when we see our students, when they perform, or as Mrs. President Tierney said, in the audience, how they act. So thank you very much, and thank all of your um, peers also for the fine time that we had. Okay, okay? Okay. Thank you all again for uh, enlightening us about what's really happening out there. Now, personnel recommendations. Oh, Dr. Almer. How you Top that. Dance on the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always a tough time following these leads. <laughs> uh, seriously, I want to thank all three of you for coming out this evening and every single one. It's just one of the best part of this entire meeting. We all appreciate you. And thank you for subbing in tonight. Okay, good evening, Mrs. Tiernan, Mr. Ibalakwa, and all members of our board. Our personnel report for the month of March 2023 is as follows. With removals from payroll, we have seven resignations, three teachers, one custodian, two paraprofessionals, and an accounting supervisor. We also have 10 retirement notifications. It's that season. We have Beth Ann Carosa, social studies teacher at East High School with 28.5 years of service. Jim Davis, health and physical education teacher at West Town Thornbury Elementary School with 28 years of service. Cindy Dippendahl, social studies teacher at Pierce Middle School with 20 years of service. Bev Milowicki, third grade teacher at Exton Elementary School with 12 years of service. Steve Mitten, social studies teacher at Henderson High School with 20 years of service. Mike Monahan, Social Studies teacher at East High School with 29 years of service. Lorraine Nelson, Special Education Power Professional at Ruston High School with 17 and a half years of service. <coughs> Joe Dijenko, art teacher at Greystone Elementary School with 31 years of service. Laura Swisher, Assistant Custodial Supervisor at our warehouse with 17 years of service. And Ann Vincent, math teacher at East High School with 20 years of service. I would like to sincerely thank all of our retirees for their service to our district and wish them much happiness in the future. With a combined total of 226 years of service, I'm proud to have worked with every person on this list. With additions to payroll, we are recommending the hiring of four teachers, one long-term substitute, two facilities and operations personnel, one secretary, and four substitute custodians. In personnel events, we are recommending Mr. Stephen Fitch to the position of athletic director at Henderson High School as a status change. Mr. Fitch has served as a teacher at Pierce Middle School and recently Hillsdale Elementary School. Additionally, I'm recommending the status change to two support staff, one confidential employee, and one facilities and operations staff. I had to deliver and notify one involuntary transfer. In personnel leaves, I'm recommending the approval of three sabbaticals. <coughs> in additional information, we have the approval of eight 
update start dates, two rescindants of offers of employment, and a list of compliance of drivers and aids provided by crafts buses and on the go with kids buses. In tutoring, I am recommending nine tutors, tutoring site managers, and homebound 504 or instructional in the home tutoring. In supplemental contracts, we have seven additions to contracts for the spring season, one addition to an annual contract, two removals from the spring season, one removal from an annual contract, two adjustments to a spring supplemental, and three adjustments to annual contracts. I am respectfully requesting board approval for all the personnel matters listed above. Thank you. Will you be having an end of year tea, you know, a little get together so that board members can come and we have the date already set. It is saved, and we will be contacting all of our board members okay. shortly. All right. You know, you know, we have big calendars, so we I have know. to get that. I have, have to, to get, get that part of that. To line up. Yes. Yes. We're okay. ready for you. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you, Dr. Omer. Thank you. Um, so, yes, Mr. Revlock? No, sorry. Mm -hmm. I was jumping ahead. <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's have a motion to accept Dr. Omer's. That would be Mr. Bibalaka with a first and Dr. Petrie with a second. They're coming along now. Uh, any discussion about personnel? Seeing none, call for the roll. Vice President Bibalaka? Yes. Director Dietrich? Yes. Director Harmon? Yes. Director Christie? Yes. Director Wamsley? Yes. Director Fine? Yes. Director Drenow? Yes. President Tierney? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Now we are looking for approval for the consent agenda. Uh, nobody has approached any of us to take anything off the consent agenda to separate it out. So if that is the situation, then I'll take a motion for Dr. Herman and uh, Ms. Fleming. All right, uh, discussion, questions about the consent agenda, which is most of the rest of the meeting. No, so we will vote. Director Herman? Yes. Director Fleming? Yes. Director Christie? Yes. Director Turnell? Yes. Director Wamsley? Yes. Director Dietrich? Yes. Vice President Bevilacqua? Yes. President Tierney? Yes. Motion. Thank you. And now it's time for our committee reports. Mr. Gurnell, Education Committee, please. Thank you, President Tiernan. Uh, on March 13th, we heard several, we heard three reports. First by Dr. Everly, uh, who provided an overview of the English language development program <clears throat> and various supports provided to our English language learners. Additionally, the presentation uh, shared demographics of the ELs in the district. Uh, she shared that, the, the, that there were a number of supports. She shared a little bit about the demographics. There were approximately 509 English language learners in our district. 316 identify as Hispanic, or 62%. 17 students with limited or interrupted formal education. She talked a little bit about the SLIFE program. This is for students who are coming from other, other places, other countries, and for whatever reason have had a, 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 a time away from formal education. So they, they maybe have missed a number of years uh, from formal education, then they come to us, to our district, and this program is specifically to support those students. Um, she, also talk, she also mentioned that there are 34 different languages spoken spoken across our 509 students at the Westchester Area School District. So this shows that we have a lot of diversity in our district. The, um, the, pro the ELD program really works with the students from the point of identification of the needs that they have as English language learners to English language development classes all the way through the annual WIDA assessment assessment. And that's used to help determine when students are ready to exit from the program, if they no longer need those supports. Um, also, the program has 
three type, or at least three types of supports, academic supports, emotional support, and also the SLIFE program for the students who had uh, time away from formal education. Uh, I want to take a moment to thank the EL students who spoke and some who sang at the committee meeting. They really did a phenomenal job of, of demonstrating what, how the program has benefited them and made them prepared for success. We also had a presentation uh, from Ms. Mrs. Bailey about Ch Chat GPT, about the Chat G GPT Westchester Area School District think tank, the role of AI or artificial intelligence in education. To me, that whole topic of artificial intelligence being used to create original thought can be a little scary uh, because we want to make sure that the students are doing their own thinking, but we also want to take advantage of the, the technologies that are out there that, that help. I thought uh, Mrs. Bailey did a great job of explaining where we are as far as the think tank process. We're really in the beginning, very beginning stages of the think tank. Um, the, there are monthly meetings from varied stakeholders who are part of the think tank. They're exploring capabilities, wonderings, and potential practices, and also discussing the place of Chat GPT in education. And she also mentioned there are a number of other different programs. Chat GPT is, is probably the most popular right now. And also reviewing the academic integrity policy. Again, we want students to be doing their own study, their own research, and their own thinking. So how, how do we balance using this technology while students are producing um, their, their work. Again, this is at the very beginning stages of it. Um, it'll be exciting to see where it goes. I describe chat GPT kind of as a roller coaster. It can be really exciting, but also really scary. And I appreciate that our, our district is taking such care to roll this out, starting with the think tank before any major decisions are made about it to really look at the potential and also any um, dangers that we need to be aware of. Finally, Dr. Reynolds did a presentation on the 2022-23 district survey highlights. Uh, she shared the family and student district-wide survey information. During 2021-22 school year, two district surveys were issued. There was a mid-year survey in February 2022 and an end of year survey in May. Uh, the survey audiences included families, staff, elementary, uh, grade five, and secondary student survey responses. Over 16,000 total responses from the mid-year and end of year uh, for family, staff, and student surveys. Uh, over seven, over 7,500 total responses were received from the family, staff, and student surveys from the fall. Uh, some of the highlights of the family survey and the staff surveys were student experience, communication, community, staff experience, staff district experience, and I say community. And that ends the first of several reports that I'll be sharing tonight. Oh, yes, you're the man on the... Um, so, um, audience, what you're listening to are committee reports these are reports from the committee chairs of the committee meetings that we had earlier in the month. Two committee meetings on one Monday night, two committee meetings on another Monday night. So now, uh, Mr. Durnell, Ms. Fleming, whoever is going to give a report tonight has put together the most salient points so that you listening to this can understand what we did, but what we did, we did a whole lot more at those committee meetings. We listened to sometimes lengthy and uh, voluminous reports, and we asked questions. At this particular meeting, uh, we're presenting to you the highlights of those meetings. So I just wanted to make it clear, sometimes you wonder, are, are, wait, I thought, I, I thought you did talk about it. Yes, we did talk about it, but this is a different meeting, and. We aren't voting on any of these items tonight, so Mr. Mr. Grinnell is just catching you up on what was done in the Education Committee, which I think is helpful. Now, you must be doing pupil services also. 
That's correct. Their director Chester uh, reached out to me today and exp expressed she wasn't able to be here, so she emailed me her notes. Uh, that the pupil services meeting was held the same night as education, March 13th. Uh, some highlights are the special education classification and the IEPs. 30.34% uh, 30, 30 of our students identified are, have sp specific learning disabilities. 28.7% are other health impairment, and then students uh, identified as being part of the autistic autism spectrum, 14%. Special ed staff totals 310, including 144 paraprofessionals, and we can't give them enough praise because they do a, a lot of the heavy lifting. Uh, 85 learning support teachers. Uh, uh, she shared, some really good news was shared that we are no longer disproportionate in any category. Um, the identification of African American students with emotional disabilities were no, dis, no longer dis, disproportionate in that area. That shows that we're making great gains for those students. Placement of Asian students in regular classrooms less than 40% of the day and then also focused on the identification of American, of American students with emotional disabilities and placement of Asian students in regular classrooms less than 40% of the day. So the fact that we're no longer disproportionate is really good news. Uh, she mentions in, uh, Ms. Chester mentions in her notes, trainings that were offered in equity and also social emotional learning. And then other areas that were presented were our autistic support, which happens in the East feeder pattern, multiple disability support in the Rustin feeder pattern, life skills support in the Henderson feeder pattern, and emotional support in the Henderson feeder and secondary schools. And that ends my pupil services report. Thank you. We only have two or so to go to later. <laughs> All right, uh, Dr. Herman, any personnel? Thank you, President Sierman. Uh, Dr. Ulmer covered everything in the personnel matters. I have nothing to add except for congratulations to all of the retirees. And that concludes my report. Thank you. All right, and property and finance, Mr. Bevilacqua. Yes, thank you. Good evening. The property and finance meeting, committee meeting was held last Monday, March 20th. Mr. Scully, as he does on a monthly basis, reviewed the budget forecast model. The 23-24 adjustments resulted in a 950K reduction in the budget count and will reduce the 23-24 millage increases. The reduction in the 23-24 next year's uh, budget will result in a 0% tax increase in Chester County and a 0.1% increase in Delaware County. Yes, I did say 0% tax increase for Chester County at this point. The, uh, the committee did uh, commend Ms. Scully and its department in their diligence in the budget process. The administration and the finance department will continue to look at the budget over the next two months as we finalize it in May. Mr. Scully then presented the committee with an application for naming of school district facilities submitted by Dr. Kevin Fagan, our principal at Greystone, to name the Greystone Elementary School Library, the Dr. James R. Scanlon Student Learning Center. The committee recommended approval for the administration to proceed with preparing cost analysis, basically for signage and that type of thing, and report back to the committee next month in April. Mr. Scully shared analysis of right to know requests, also known as RTKs, received from July of last year, 2020 through 2022, through February of this year, 2023. The report that was presented indicated that the district received a total of 92 RTK requests. Ten of, it, ten of those were appealed by the Office of Open Records, and the district spent approximately $60,000 in legal fees during that time frame for various legal uh, attributes to satisfy the requests that were provided. Mr. Burstner then reviewed with the committee the 2324 capital fund projects to be awarded. I'm just going to list out a couple of the, the awards there for our capital fund projects. Penwood replacing roof with Garvey Rourke. Stetson boiler replacement with Divine Brothers. Stetson replacement of the generator and control wiring for Power <coughs> Premier. Fugit replacement of, of its generator and control wiring also with Power Premier. And East Bradford's replacement for the generator with Power Premier. 
the committee recommended approval of these 23, 24 capital fund projects as they all were within budget. Mr. Burson then continued with reviewing to the committee the 23, 24 capital reserve projects to be awarded. And they were as follows, district-wide fencing with ESH fencing, um, some other district-wide fencing repairs with fence sense, district-wide flooring replacements with PC Curie, and Wood Music Room Flooring, also with PC Curie, and West Town Thornberry's PA Intercom System with Intelcom Systems. The committee also recommended approval of these 23-24 capital reserve projects that are also within budget. Mr. Burster then provided some information to the, to the committee and to the board, and provided the committee with a water quality testing update in accordance with Act 39 of 2018 that advised the committee that the testing, water testing was completed last year and we were well within spec and will continue to be tested on a two or three year cycle. I have no items for approval as everything was on the consent as President Tierney mentioned earlier. The next property and finance meeting will be held on April 17th. All are welcome. And that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you. Now, our new committee, our newest committee, Ms. Fleming, policy review. Thank you, President Tiernan. The policy review committee met on Monday, March 20th. The committee reviewed the following policies. Policy 251, students experiencing homelessness, foster care, or other educational instability. And policy 830, electronic data storage. We continued on with section 000, local board procedures, revising 003, function, 004, membership, 005, organization, new administrative, excuse me, new administrative guideline, 005, AG1, board organization guideline, 006, meetings, also noting that the following administrative guidelines are being revised, 200, AG7, and 800, AG1. These were all approved as part of the consent agenda vote earlier tonight. Our next meeting will be April 17th, Monday, before the Property and Finance Committee meeting. That is my report for today. Thank you. Very efficient. All right, and other reports. We are back to Director Grinnell. who will tell us about the intermediate unit. Thank you, President Tiernan. The Chester County Intermediate Unit <coughs> Board of Directors held its monthly meeting on Wednesday, March 15, 2023, at the Educational Service Center on Blue Road in Downingtown. The following items were discussed. Mr. Joseph Lubitsky, Director of Administrative Services, reviewed its first reading, the draft 2023-24 marketplace budget, uh, to the board members and answered questions. The CCIU Board uh, will vote on the marketplace budget on April 19th. A key point made by Mr. Levitsky uh, was that the cost of marketplace programs for purchase by Chester County School Districts would increase 2.99%, which is below the Act 1 statewide index of 4.1%. School districts are only invoiced for actual services provided. There are 103 programs projected to run in the 2023-24 school year, which operate through, through our marketplace budgets. Dr. George Fiore, Executive Director and Board President Wolf, recognized CCIU's brand ambassadors with the Certificate of Appreciation for their outstanding efforts in communicating the IU's mission through social media. The Brand Ambassador Program is a completely voluntary program. It is staff member, if a staff member is interested, they complete an application process, and if selected into the program, they are required to attend meetings throughout the year, uh, which they receive training in social media best practices, Canva, Canva training, and class intercom training. Since the inception of this voluntary program this year, we have 38 ambassadors, and our social media posts have significantly increased. The CCIU Board of Directors approved the 2023-24 core and operational education budgets in the total amount of $66,294,963. Uh, finally, the Technical College High School, TCHS, held a school board appreciation dinner 
on Thursday, March 23rd. I was fortunate enough to sit at the fun table uh, with President Tiernan, uh, Do Dr. Herman, Ms. Ms. Chester, and Dr. Reynolds. Uh, it was a great evening, and it was a great way to see the students in the culinary arts program show their talents with an amazing dinner, including surf and turf, and I'm not joking. Um, but also we got to hear testimonials of students who would come up to the mic and share about their experiences. They would share why they came to uh, <coughs> TCHS. Uh, students would share that they weren't really interested in school, they weren't motivated, but they wanted to change and they went to TCHS and found that working with their hands not only helped their vocational training, but also their academic training. Um, these are students that are leaving that program with licenses and certificates that are making them workplace ready. So it was a phenomenal dinner. There are two other dinners that are happening. I don't have the dates exactly, but the other board members, if you missed them, take advantage of those. They're, they're phenomenal dinners and a great way to see the program. The next uh, CCIU Board of Directors meeting will be held on Wednesday, April 19th. 2023 at 7.30 at the Technical College High School Pennox Bridge campus in West Grove, Pennsylvania. And that concludes my third report. So, Mr. Cornell, at our table was a young woman from Ruston who attended Ruston and also was in the Vet Tech program who was on her way now in August to Texas A&M to become eventually, her goal is to become an equine surgeon. So she started out going over to TCHS. She really, really wasn't so excited about her academics back home. And she thought she'd give something a try. And she liked animals okay, and so that was nice. But her, her interest has turned into real life, career, college aspirations that are taking place. And a number of students over at TCHS do go on to college. So we want to know where that 2.99 marketplace costs go for the students that we send over there. They are getting certifications, yes. They have jobs, and they are going to college. So it, it is a remarkable program, and I, Chester County is probably, as Dr. Fiore would be happy to say at any time, the premier uh, career technical education uh, section of in Pennsylvania, program in Pennsylvania. So it's always, again, it's another part of this, the education that our kids are getting, but when people lament the fact that there aren't, there aren't any plumbers, there aren't any electricians, there are, there are some, but it takes a while to get out of TCHS and sometimes go to an apprentice program. That's what they encourage. Okay, PSBA, that would be you, Dr. Herman. Thank you, Chris Rizzoli. Good evening. I have two items, informational items. There's a live webinar. It's called Improving School Safety and Security. It's April 4th, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. The webinar provides live panel discussion on current issues in school safety and security, including threat assessment, school security personnel, school safety training, and initiative in addressing school violence. Second item, um, legislators work on a consistent basis with PSBA along with PSBA um, grassroots members. And Governor um, Shapiro, he's looking into the, his first priority is looking into the charter school formula for funding because for many years they're trying to look at that in a very different way because it at times seems to be excessive, taking away from our public schools. That concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And oh my, it's Dr. Yeah. Grinnell. I mean, Mr. Grinnell again, I'm sorry. <laughs> Equity reward. Ah. <laughs> Could you talk to us about what's happening at the CCIU with legislative? Okay. I will, thank you. Mrs. Kiernan. Yes. So I attended my first meeting of the Chester County School Board Legislative Council on March 22nd. The number one topic of the meeting is the proposed education budget from Governor Shapiro. In this proposed budget, 
there, will, there would be an increase of 567 million, which is 7.8% in basic education funding, and 104 million, which is 7.8% in special education funding. At the local level, level in Chester County, this would be a 5.9 5 million increase in basic education funding and 2.8 million in special education funding. Specifically for our district, it would mean a 1.7 million increase, which is 15.6% in basic education funding and 149,000 or 2.8% in special education funding. Now this is just the proposed budget and has not been voted on or approved yet by the state legislature. Uh, also to note, the council's legislative breakfast, which will be held on Thursday morning, April 20th at 8.30 at TCHS. I did attend this last year and the breakfast is also made by the culinary students from TCHS and it was very good. Uh, the special speaker at this breakfast will be Hannah Barrick, is the executive director of the Pennsylvania Association of School Business Officials, or PASBO. Pardon me, <clears throat> I have allergies also. <laughs> uh, all school board members in Chester County and administrative staff are invited to attend this um, breakfast. Uh, Ms. Barrick will address the impact of the state budget on school district finances, the fair funding decision, and charter school funding. Uh, I actually specifically requested through the council that you also address the PA state audit of the 12 Pennsylvania school districts, uh, include, which included our district, Westchester, uh, particularly relating to fund balances. Uh, the, the thirdly, uh, another important matter discussed were the results of their survey of board members in Chester County of uh, priority, uh, what the board members' priorities are as far as uh, legis legislative actions that are going on. Uh, the results, 95% of all of the board members who responded agreed that important topics, uh, and this goes along with the PSBA report, are cyber charter school funding reform and accountability, and also reforming both brick and mortar charter and cyber charter schools at accountability. And uh, I figured out, they didn't give this information, but I, I was interested to see how many of the school board members actually responded to the survey, and it was 60% of school board members, including superintendents who are also included uh, in the survey. So 72 out of a possible 120 school board members responded to the survey. And 95% of those support the uh, charter school funding, reform, and accountability. And that concludes my report. The, um, the opportunity that we have to have breakfast with the legislators is a rare opportunity for school board members to actually sit at a table and interface with, with the people who represent us in Harrisburg because I, I think sometimes they wish that we just would go away, but it's a very good opportunity to sit and share breakfast and also talk about things that we are concerned about and have them, if they do decide to come, so a lot do not come, they send their aid or something because then they don't have to get up and officially say anything. But it is a very useful opportunity to meet with people in the state legislature that we wish would hear us sometimes. And, and I will, uh, the plan, I believe, is to try to intersperse school board members right. with the legislators right. so that everyone does get a chance to discuss rather right. than everybody sitting with your own people at your right. own table. So. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Now, Mr. Drum, is it time? I promise this is my last report. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so thank you, President Terry. March is Women's History Month, and Fern Hill Elementary School did a wonderful job on Friday, March 3rd, kicking it off with a short musical performance and a panel <clears throat> of local female leaders, including State Senator Carolyn Kamina, Westchester Mayor Lillian D. Baptiste. Westchester Borough Council member Lisa Dorsey and her own substitute superintendent Dr. Kalia Reynolds. These inspiring women shared a bit about themselves, their roles in the community, and words of wisdom with students. Earlier this month, Stetson Middle School celebrated National Foreign Language Week. Together, students and staff decorated the school's central hallway with flags from all nations, 
staff talked with students about the languages they spoke and studied when they were in school, and many home rooms decorated their doors to create visual representations of different countries worldwide. During the week, world language students co-anchored the morning announcements in Spanish, French, and Italian. Finally, the culminating event was an international potluck dinner where families were invited to enjoy a night of delicious international cuisine and conversation. Almost 100 people attended the event. <clears throat> there was an equity workshop on March 16th from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. that was attended by equity leads from the schools, advocates, and other Westchester area school district staff uh, that participated in the workshop. The workshop was titled an, in an Instructional Approach to Safety Utilizing Content Instruction and practice to buffer the effects of stress and trauma on students, presented by Dr. Eliana Edwards. The session provided education ed educator strategies for utilizing lesson planning and daily instruction to restore and create safety for students in the classroom. Throughout this session, educators learned about the impact of trauma and toxic stress on students' health and achievement outcomes, and how engaging in the process of creating school safety contributes to the development of loving, growth-fostering relationships that intervene on trauma. The evening of Wednesday, March 22nd, officially began the start of the holy month of Ramadan. We would like to wish all of our community members honoring this special time a peaceful and blessed Ramadan, Ramadan Mubarak. <clears throat> this past Friday, Ruston students led an SEL-focused afternoon and participated in a charity dodgeball tournament, which we heard about earlier, with all proceeds going to the Wounded Warrior Project. Apparently, the staff team didn't stand a chance against the students, but everyone had a great time supporting a good cause. Tell them I'll call it back. <laughs> <laughs> Director Dr. Una Martin would like to invite our community to gather at Pierce Middle School on Sunday, April 16th from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. to learn about and help shape a mentoring tutoring program for Westchester Area School District students. Our vision is to strengthen partnerships with our community stakeholders to positively impact our students by providing academic support. The core purpose is to fulfill the mission of educating and inspiring all students to achieve their personal best. Anyone who is interested should sign up using the link in the, new, in the newsletter uh, that was sent out to parents and community partners. Child care and interpreters will be available during the meeting as well as light refreshments. In leaving, elevating students' voices, especially students from marginalized and underrepresented groups, is another priority. We are planning to send a total of 15 high school students who currently serve in leadership roles within the student affinity groups to gather with like position students uh, from neighboring school districts to talk about their groups, learn from each other, and work collaboratively to develop ideas and strategies and activities that can further belonging and leadership within their schools and their communities. This full day meeting is a true leadership opportunity enabling students to expand their critical thinking and collaboration skills while building their understanding of the larger community systems around them. Dr. Martin would like you to know about an upcoming workshop uh, for equity leads, advocates, and other Westchester Area School District staff being held on April 13th from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. entitled Supporting Language Learners, Part 2, presented by Dr. Ramon Martinez. This session will focus on highlighting students' linguistic capabilities and identifying how they overlap with the forms of language and literacy valued in schools. Participants will be invited to reflect on, discuss, and try out practical strategies for exploring and expanding their own students' linguistic repertoires. Finally, I'm sad to report the passing of a Westchester icon and former Westchester Area School District employee. Alice Thomas passed away on Wednesday, March 22nd, at the age of 92. 
Born and raised in Westchester, Mrs. Thomas was a firm believer in the power of what a community can accomplish when it comes together. Mrs. Thomas had been involved in the, her community since childhood and continued into, into adulthood by working in the guidance office at Henderson High School in Westchester, PA. She focused her career on helping children while also supporting efforts for social justice, integration, and minority representation. While working at Henderson, Mrs. Thomas saw the value of bringing people together. Mrs. Thomas strove to integrate Henderson High School into the broader Westchester community. She altruistically served as the bridge between the school and the community. In 1978, Mrs. Thomas helped form the Black Student Union uh, because there was a lack of minority leadership in the student government at that time. Mrs. Thomas said, I wanted to give my students an identity at the school and make them see that they could do anything anyone else could do. In 1991, four African American students became the first minority students to represent the student body. Mrs. Thomas felt that the Black Student Union was one of the most impactful undertakings of her career. In 1998, Dr. Clifford DeBaptiste, former Westchester mayor, distinguished community leader, and personal friend of Mrs. Thomas, started the Alice M. Thomas Scholarship Fund to honor students that exemplify Mrs. Thomas's awareness of social justice academic achievement, and community involvement. The fund is dedicated to the 35 years of service Mrs. Thomas gave to the guidance office at Henderson High School, as well as her continued involvement with the school and community. Mrs. Alice Thomas will be missed and her legacy will live on. That concludes my report. And her service is on April 1st. Yes. At St. Paul's Baptist yes. Church. <coughs> At noon. Yeah. I'm noon. Yeah. Yes. She would approve. Um, all right. It is uh, in other business. They're on the consent agenda, so we don't have to vote on those. And now it is time for comments from residents on non agenda items. Thank you, President Chairman. Again, we have four registered speakers this evening. Uh, when your names are called, please approach the podium and state your first name, last name, and municipality. As a reminder, comments are limited to three minutes per person. Please direct all commentary to the board as a whole. Public comments may be interrupted or terminated if the commentary exceeds three minutes or if the comments are obscene and or threatening in nature. We will now call the first speaker. Amy Vaccaro. Uh, Amy Ficarra, West Goshen Township. This letter was published in October of 2021, but I think it's relevant today. Um, dear editor, the rapid politicization of school boards should be of concern to all stakeholders. There are good and valid reasons that school board members should adopt a nonpartisan stance in their duties. The only agenda a school board candidate should have is the continued educational progress of our students, the continued free use of taxpayer money, and community, community resources, and the health and the safety of the students and staff. These goals, by their very nature, are nonpartisan. School board members who sincerely adopt these goals are really partisan in their approach to achieving them. This does not mean the directors do not disagree at times, but it does mean that they work with the district's administration for a set of common goals in good faith. Yet, school boards across the country have become the front line of the partisan divide that presently plagues us. Three candidates for director of the Westchester Area School District are clear examples of this trend. All three of these candidates are supported by large political action committees and the local Republican Party, all of which are actively politicizing the election. Further, they actively and demonstrably engage in lies and distortions about public school board meetings, school districts, actions, and policies. One may only visit their websites to see ample evidence of this fact. If elected, these three candidates have demonstrated through their words, their actions, and their affiliations that they will disrupt, attack, and weaken an excellent school district. They have also publicly stated their intention to ignore state mandates, thereby placing our district in legal jeopardy. Further, they consistently question the intentions and diminish the experience and expertise of Westchester Area School District's talented teachers and administrators. Two of these candidates have removed their children from the district, yet they still wish to swim the board and undermine the foundation of our excellent school district. This cannot happen. We urge the Westchester Area School District voters to elect candidates regardless of party who are qualified, demonstrate a deep commitment to excellent public schools, 
and are capable of working constructively and respectfully with administrators, teachers, parents, and the community at large. This letter was signed by four current board directors. These are your words, yet last week's choice of the newest board member seems to go against many of these principles. With all due respect, the person chosen to fill the vacant board seat did not appear to be the highest qualified of the applicants. The person appointed is certainly not apolitical. Concerning this individual works for the Democratic State Senator and supports Democratic causes, it is clear that this person was not chosen regardless of party. A more cynical person might say that this person was chosen solely based on their political leanings and ideology. The nomination and appointment last week was disappointing and showed hypocrisy for many on this board. The students, staff, parents, and taxpayers of the Westchester Area School District deserve better. Sarah Getz. Sarah Getz, East Bradford. First, I want to say welcome school board, Mr. Christie. Um, I'm going to be the one that says the quiet part out loud because clearly on social media, some people weren't happy with the choice of Mr. Christie. Uh, but if someone's going to call you a child abuser and then try to remove you from your position and then waste the district's money on court fees, I fully agree with the school board's decision to not elect that person. I believe if the tables were turned, she probably would have made the same choice that you guys did. As for special meeting itself, I do agree that the meeting last week left a lot of questions. I would have liked to have seen the questionnaires from each candidate. Um, I'm only familiar with a handful of the, the people that ran and would have liked to have seen what they had said. Some of them are running in May and I would like to know their intentions for the school board. I would have also liked to have known what the meeting was going to look like itself. I don't expect this type of meeting to happen anytime soon, uh, but in the future, if you could make it a, make us all aware of what to expect in those situations um, and take that into consideration, that would be great. Thank you. Amanda Greenberg. I'd like to ask about what resources and policies the district has for our teachers in regards to student safety. Several of my friends have kids at Fugit and East, and they're constantly telling me about their kids being scared of bullying and violence at school. One even told me that her daughter opted not to be in the play at Fugit this year because of bullying, and in light of the events of last week, she made the right decision. After several parents of Fugit students telling me about the awful bullying that occurred during the student viewing of the play last week, I'm saddened and concerned for both the students and the teachers. Why were the teachers not given the tools to handle blatant bullying during the play? Why were the soloists subjected to a level of heckling from other students that their solos couldn't even be heard from the audience? Were the teachers and administrators not prepared to handle the bad behaviors? Are they being instructed not to? As a mom of kids in a Fugit theater and as a teacher, I'm concerned about the frequency and escalation of violence at Fugit and the other schools in our district. Why are our teachers not empowered and equipped to handle incidents of bullying and violence? The district says it has a zero tolerance policy, but that doesn't seem to be the case in practice. How will you give our teachers and students the tools necessary to deal with bullying and violence now that it seems to be a regular occurrence. Alexis Cooper. Alexis Cooper, West Goshen Township. Imagine your 13 and 14 year old child having to choose a book for report in eighth grade language arts class at Pierce Middle School. Imagine what your reaction would be like if they chose the book, The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. Here are some passages from that book. I can't stop, I don't want to stop. My body absolutely does not care what my brain thinks. I feel his kiss everywhere. The tips of my hair, the center of my belly, the backs of my knees, I want to pull him into me and I want to melt into him. We move backward and the back of my legs bump into the couch. He guides me down until he's half on top of me with one leg still on the ground. I need to keep kissing. 
My body is hectic. I can't get enough. I can't get close enough. Something chaotic and insistent builds inside me. I'm aching off, arching off the couch to get closer to him than I already am. His hand squeezes my waist and travels up to my chest. He brushes lightly over my breast. My hands cannot stop touching him. They slide themselves out of his hair and down to the hard shifting muscle of, muscles of his back. Of their own volition, they slide over his butt. As I suspected, it is spectacular. Firm and round and perfectly proportioned, it's the kind of butt that requires holding. He should never wear pants. I palm and squeeze it, and it feels even better than I'd expected. I wait for her, for her eyes to say yes. We start out chaste, just look touching, tasting, but soon we can't get enough. She parts her lips, and her tongues tangle and retreat and tangle again. I'm hard everywhere, but it feels too good, too right to be embarrassed about it. She's making little moaning sounds that make me want to kiss her even more. Now imagine your eighth grader appears choosing the book The Memory of Things by Gay Polisner for language arts class. I shift her down gently onto my bed. I lift her shirt only a few inches, and this time I press my lips to her warm, flat stomach, doing what I've wanted to do since this afternoon. Kyle, not to. Yeah, I won't, I swear. Just this one perfect spot, that's all. I slide my lips back and forth, there is for a second, then shift myself up so I'm lying on top of her again. I brush my fingers through her short, chopped hair. I stare into her eyes and press my lips to hers and kiss her for as long as I can. Also, these books contain a decent amount of profanity. Is this what, pass is this what passes for education these days? This feels like a slap in the face to parents who most likely have no idea that this content is in the curriculum. I think it's time for some serious soul searching in this district. If you want to have real discussions around what constitutes academic excellence, it's time to raise the bar. Thank you. That concludes public comment this evening. And with that, I will call for a, a meeting to agenda the Westchester Area School Board meeting. Uh, Dr. Dietry and a second, Mrs. Fleming, and we uh, vote all in favor of adjourning the meeting. Yes. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Yes.